Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I make all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to design a sublimation tumbler in Inkscape. Now, if you already know how to use some design software, you can still use these concepts in that, but I wanna show you the images I got off of Creative Fabrica, how I pulled them all together, and the cute design that I ended up making. Now, I know when I say Inkscape, people are tempted to leave because you don't wanna learn a new software. But if you don't have a design software that you use, try it out, watch some videos, follow along step by step, and pretty soon you're gonna understand the basic concepts and making your own designs. All right, so let's go ahead and open up Inkscape. Now when it opens, this is how mine looks. And this is a 12 by 12 square. I have that as the default because I use Cricut a lot. So the first thing I need to do, because I'm gonna print at eight and a half by 11, is I need to go to File, Document Properties, and then I'm gonna select eight and a half by 11. Once I've done that, I just hit this red X and it's already changed. Now I found three different things in Creative Fabrica that I thought were so cute, but I wanted to put them together to make a tumbler. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna bring over the background for my design. And this is just an animal print. So I drag it over and then I just say, okay. I just stay with these default settings. All right, so here it is, and you can see right here now it's 9.422 wide. I wanna go ahead and change that to 9.4, and this is based on the measurements from my tumbler. I get a lot of questions about what size do you print out? Well, that really depends. All the tumblers I use are very similar, but the different brands are slightly different, so you do have to measure. So I wanted 9.4 for the width and 8.15 for the height. So then the next layer that I want to bring over is a bleach effect. And this is a file that has a bunch of different ones. And I kind of played with these. And I liked number nine. I'll show you something about it I don't like. But let's just drag it over first. All right, so here's what I don't like. You can see through this one. Some of the others are more solid. But here's what I can do to fix that. So with it selected, I can do Command-C for copy, Command-V for paste. And then I can just start moving these so they're not quite exactly on top of each other, but they're close. And let's go ahead and do Command-V again. And that pasted a third one. Now this time, I wanna go ahead and go to Object and Flip Horizontal because I wanna kinda of round this out. Let me show you. I didn't like how it was all just angled up. So I flipped it horizontal so I could kind of balance that out. Okay, now on Inkscape, you have to go all the way around your design for it to select it. So right now I'm all the way around those three copies of the bleach effect. So when I let go, it just selects those. And I wanna to go to Object, and I wanna group those together. Now I'll resize that here in a little bit, but let me bring in the last part of my design. And it's a cute little love potion sign. I'll drop it here and I'll say, okay. And notice, you can almost barely see it because it's white. Let's change that to black for now. All right, so with the proportions locked, I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller. Now that looks pretty good in height, but I want it to be narrower. So hopefully it doesn't make it look too bad. I'm gonna go a tiny bit narrower, and then to balance it out, I'll make it just a little bit shorter. Okay, notice it doesn't, it doesn't fit with my bleach design. So now I'm going to click on the bleach design. Remember, we grouped the three layers. And I'll make it shorter. And I could do it by dragging, or I could go up here. But I don't know the width or the height I want, so I'm just going to drag it. 
All right, let's make it a tiny bit shorter again. And I think it needs to extend a little bit to the right here. Now this would be cute, but you can do more with this. Now this love potion is an SVG, so we have to figure out did they group it or did they weld it? So if I select it and I go up to object and ungroup, okay, fortunately all they did was group it. So I can work with each one of these individually. If they would have welded it or made it where it was one image, you could still deal with it, but you have to go to path and break apart and you'd have a lot more complexity. Now the reason I want to be able to work with each of these independently is I want to change some of the colors. So I think I'll stay with black for the outline and black for the cupid, but I want to change the word love to kind of a light pink. All right, I'm going to blow this up just a little bit more. So again, you hit shift and plus. Now I want to make the word love kind of a light pink, but I want to use a color that's in here. So you select your word, then you go to this little dropper, and then you can kind of look for different colors. And you see the little bitty square by my dropper, how it changes colors? It's picking up colors in the design. So if I click, let's find something, there we go. If I click now, see my love is a light pink. Let's go ahead and keep that for now. Now I want to select the word potion and go back to the dropper and I can just click right up here. It's going to change word potion. Now let's work with the little heart right here. And I want that to be more of a red. I see some reds over here. So it is selected. I use the dropper. Now let's just look for a red. Not quite dark enough. I want a really bright red. That's more of a purple. I know there's reds in here. Okay, I see one right here. That's close. Now, I don't have to stay with colors in here. If I wanted to, Look, I can swipe over here. I can look for the reds. And here's some pinky reds. Let's just go with this. Here's some more reds. These are more blood reds. Ooh, okay, I'm going with that one. It's your traditional red. Now, I like that color, so I want to change all these little shapes to that. So I'm going to go to the select tool and I'm going to select this one, hold the shift key down and then select the other three. Now that they're selected, I go back over to the dropper tool and I know I like this red, so I just select it. All right, let's back out and see what it looks like. Now I'm pretty happy with that. This love and the word potion, not quite happy with those yet. So let's select one of them, hit the dropper. Let's go look for a better color. Okay, that has a lot more drama to it. I like that. So now I need to go back to the select tool, pick the word potion, the dropper tool, and then I'll click right up here and it changed it as well. All right, there we go. I think that looks cute. I want to go ahead and select everything that's within that sign. Now remember, you have to go all the way around an image to select it. So right now it should not select the white and it shouldn't select the animal print. So I'll let go and it didn't. Let's go ahead and group all that together. And then I'm going to go ahead and with it selected, hold the shift key down, add the white to it. And let's just group that together. I'll go to Object and Group. All right, we'll go ahead and back out. Now, I want all of that to be centered within the animal print. So I'm going to click over here after selecting the whole thing, the animal print and the other things. I'll hit Align, and I'll center on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. All right, so there's our design. 
but I can go ahead and select all of it, go up to Object and Group. Now with it all selected, because this is sublimation, I need to flip that horizontal. So now I go to Object, Flip Horizontal. Now if I were to print this now, this is my paper. Anything you see within the borders of the paper would print, but this would get cut off. It's not going to fit like that, so now I have to go to Object and rotate it. Make sure it's within the borders of the paper, and I'm ready to print. So hopefully this has taught you just a little bit about Inkscape, how you can use it to really up your designs. And in part two, I'm going to actually make this Tumblr. So if you're interested in that as well, make sure you're subscribed, click that bell, and then select all notification. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. All right, so what do you think? You think it's something you might like to try? Let me show you how my design turned out. Now, it's backwards, of course, because it's sublimation, and it will be brighter, but isn't that cute? And it really wasn't that difficult. So if you're interested in seeing this go on in Tumblr, and I'm going to try a new Tumblr press, then make sure you're subscribed and that you've selected the all notification when you click that bell.